new biomaterials are actually the topic of uh, today. One of them, and BOTIS is really very, <coughs> let's say, up to it in new biomaterials. Uh, and one of them is the Cerebon Plus, which we are going to discuss today, uh, w which is a new innovation and uh, a combination of uh, Cerebon, of uh, bovine bone material together with hyaluronic acid. So actually the purpose of uh, this new innovation, and we will hear from Serhat a lot, is uh, it, uh, extremely good uh, handling of this material. And actually hyaluronic acid is, looks that uh, it seems that induce and uh, regulate uh, the um, uh, cell proliferation, induce adhesion, and positively uh, induce the uh, angiogenesis. So, Basically, no matter what material we use in implant dentistry, uh, it's the technique. It's the most important thing is who is using this. And uh, it's uh, very important to, uh, not to have a good, only a good material, it's how to use it. And I think, Serhat, you are the one that you will show us a lot of uh, cases and how this works in your hands. And I will just show you and share with you one case where we have a single molar, immediate implant placement, guided surgery. And you saw maybe the discussion that I had yesterday together with Uli Grunder. Uh, what is the uh, potential of bone formation when we have such big gaps? This implant is uh, 4.3 millimeter in diameter. And you see the, 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 the gap from the bone is like maybe 10 millimeters, not, not the gap. The, uh, the a molar is 10 millimeters and the gap can be 3, 4 or 5 millimeters. In this uh, particular case, the one-time abutment, like I showed yesterday also in my lecture, and fill up with combination of Cerebon and um, Maxcraft, Cerebon Plus and Maxcraft. And actually, this is what we see after only two months where we are delivering the final crown. Thanks. Take care. Thank you. We are not going to extract this tooth and place an implant. We can regenerate this. Look at this. Although this tooth is not vital, we are not going to remove based on some documentaries, right? We are not removing this tooth. What we are doing, we need to analyze how the defect morphology is. And when you see that the palatal aspect is going towards 12 millimeter with bleed on probing. Of course, we first provide non-surgical therapy, then we reflect our flap. This is enough for me from the buccal aspect. I really don't want to reflect all the buccal flap. Why there is a need? Because I see the residual bone crest, but I need to make a big palatal flap to see the developmental groove causing this uh, periodontal destruction for these uh, instances. I remove the granulation tissue from the defect and also I didn't perform any vertical releasing because the anatomy of the palatal just give me the opportunity to reflect the flap only with the palate uh, papillary incisions. So in this way, I will apply this novel biomaterial. Uh, it is the xenograft that we know as the cerebone, but we enhance this material with uh, hyaluronic acid. So we're going to add some of the modifier for the early wound healing to attract more cells into the area. We all want to work with the cells. Scaffolding also works, but we want to increase the rate of healing. So you see that we really don't want to overfill the defect. We have a lot of biomaterial left in the tray, but we cannot compete over the biology. We are not going to achieve what is settled before. And in this way, these are the bony peaks on that area. So, of course, from the principles of the GTR, published by 1982, Sutura Niemann, we, of course, need to stabilize this collagen membrane, which is a uh, Jason membrane for this case. I 
tightly adapt the membrane over the neck of the tooth, like a scarf, and then I close the flap. But the most important part is the closure of the defect-associated papilla for me in this case. And you see the immediately after surgery and the two weeks healing time, you see the incision line, but it is primarily closed, thank God. So this is the one year resolution of the intrabony defect, and you can see that almost 14 millimeter of probing depth reduced to three millimeter, but most importantly for me, the questionable question mark for me was from the palatal aspect, and also I closed the palatal aspect, it is now three millimeter, and you see that this developmental groove can be reduced with our ultrasonic or sonic instrumentation, or even you can use your uh, very uh, fine burrs to make it smooth. So, the tooth is in our side, of course. So you can see the baseline in one year with this novel biomaterial, which is Cerebon Plus. Wow, yeah, wow. Well, amazing presentation. And I think uh, I have so many questions, actually. Please take a seat. So what is your uh, logic behind, let's say, the use of the biomaterial Cerebon Plus or okay. in combination uh, with a membrane for uh, vertical and horizontal augmentation. The first I would like to highlight, this material is already a ready sticky bone. So you don't have a nurse or yourself to go to the antecubital mm -hmm. vein of the patient mm -hmm. and a spinning device to create uh, <coughs> for this uh, sticky bone formation. This is the first, because it is so important when you apply a particulated graft for the difficult areas in the mouth. For example, the posterior mandible. And the second question is, uh, we, sometimes we see a, a central incisor or, or a front tooth which is uh, with full papillas and everything and has is compromised and has to be extracted. Yeah. But when we do the x-ray, yeah. you see the bone and on, on the, on the adjacent, adjacent teeth. teeth is low. This is a nightmare. So basically if we extract the tooth and leave everything, we, ha we will have a recession. Yes, for sure. So how do you deal with these cases where you have a central incisor which is perfect as uh, yes. you look it, but the bone has receded and the tooth has to be extracted? What is your protocol in this uh, type of cases? Uh, for single tooth replacement, let me say, for, for sure I want to have a really nice prosthodontics around me, mm -hmm. you know? like you or uh, Francesco Mintrone, you know? Otherwise, if you ended up with a little bit of recession, then you have to make some tricks with the prosthetics mm -hmm. and you have to sacrifice the number 21 for these instances. And that's why early implant placement with the Busser, I think it's worked very well mm -hmm. because he has Ulf Belsel, yes. let me say. Because sometimes you need uh, 21st and uh, 11 needs to be combined with uh, uh, some prosthetic works. But to be honest, if I would not restrict it to place an implant, there is no obligation. I would do a uh, rich preservation, mm -hmm. an immediate prosthetic seal, like there is no invention of the implant and I live like centuries ago, and make a um, one wing Maryland bridge, mm -hmm. and if it fails, then I can consider these options. But okay. this, is, this is called a little bit of periodontally compromised situation to me. Yes. And if it's in the high lip line, this is really critical for yeah, That's why I wanted to press you a little bit. I know it's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs>